Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about the oxidation states. So, first of all, what exactly is the oxidation state? Oxidation state, or oxidation number if you like, is a hypothetical charge that an atom would have if the bonding electrons were assigned to a more electronegative atom in each of our bond. So essentially, we are going to be treating each bond as if it is an ionic bond rather than the covalent bond. But there is a very important distinction between the oxidation state and charges. Those are not the same thing. When it comes to a charge, the charge is a real and very much measurable net gain or loss of the electrons in the molecule. So, for instance, if I look at this methyl anion CH3-, we have a very real electron pair on our carbon, and carbon has excess of the electron density. Because of that, that carbon has a negative charge. However, when it comes to our oxidation states or oxidation numbers, those are artificial bookkeeping tools. They have nothing to do with the reality. So, if I look at something like methane, for instance, the oxidation state state of carbon in methane is going to be negative 4, however, the charge of carbon in methane is going to be 0. Now, since we have established the difference between the oxidation states and charges, let's actually look into how we calculate our uh, oxidation states. So, when it comes to the oxidation states in organic chemistry, first and foremost, we are going to be interested in oxidation states of a carbon atom. And when it comes to carbon, the range of the the oxidation states can go from negative 4 all the way to the positive 4, depending on what that carbon is connected to. And normally, we would look up the electronegativities of the elements that are connected to our carbon to figure out how exactly the bond is polarized. But lucky for us, there is a very simple trick, so you don't actually have to remember the numbers. The non-metals to the left from carbon, like hydrogen and boron, those guys are going to have a low lower electronegativity than carbon, which means that they are going to be pushing the electron density uh, onto the carbon atom, and from our perspective that means that these guys, when they are connected to carbon, going to make carbon more negative. When it comes to all other non-metals, like nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, sulfur, you name it, all of those guys have a higher electronegativity than carbon, so formally all of those guys are going to be pulling the electron density away from carbon, making it more positive. And we're also going to assume that all metals have lower electronegativity than carbon, and they will push the electron density onto the carbon, making it more negative if we have a carbon to a metal bond. So, armed with this information, if I look at a simple example, let's say it's something like methane over here, then by looking where the carbon is and where the hydrogen is in my periodic table, I can clearly see that each hydrogen is going to be pushing the electron density towards my carbon, so this way the oxidation state on carbon is going to be negative 4, because each hydrogen is pushing electrons towards the carbon. If I look at something a little bit more complex here, then now I can see that hydrogens are pushing electron density onto the carbon, while oxygen is formally pulling that electron density out of carbon which means that each carbon-hydrogen bond is going to make carbon a little bit more negative, while carbon-oxygen bond is going to make my carbon a little bit more positive. So now, combining all of that together, I get that the oxidation state of carbon in methanol is going to be negative 2. We are going to use a similar principle when dealing with double or triple bonds. We are going to count every bond separately. So in this case, we have two bonds between carbon and hydrogen, each of those are going to be pushing the electrons onto carbon, making it more negative, and we have two bonds from carbon to oxygen, each of which is going to be pulling the electron density away from carbon. So this way my carbon is going to get more negative from hydrogens, more positive from oxygen, 
overall, both of those effects going to cancel out and the oxidation state of carbon and this molecule is going to be zero. And you can use this principle to figure out the oxidation state in any molecule you like. So if I take something more complex and let's say I look at this blue carbon and this amide, then that carbon is connected to oxygen, nitrogen and another carbon. Now, here, since we uh, don't have any difference between the carbon and another carbon electronegativity, this bond between carbons is not going to be counted as either positive or negative influence. So, this way, I only have two bonds towards oxygen, one bond towards nitrogen, overall making my uh, carbon lose the electron density three times in a row, giving me the oxidation state of plus three pretty easy. And before we wrap up this super quick tutorial here, I want to remind you to be very careful with implicit atoms. So, for instance, if we look at this green carbon over here, then that carbon is connected to carbon once, carbon twice, nitrogen, but we also have an implicit hydrogen in this case, which means that if we don't take that into consideration, you can easily miscalculate your oxidation state. So here we would uh, see that the carbon-carbon bonds, they don't really count. One bond is pulling the electron density towards nitrogen. The other bond is uh, pushing electrons from hydrogen onto carbon, overall going to give you a net zero oxidation state for this atom. So, as you can see, calculating the oxidation states of carbon and organic molecules is incredibly easy. And for as long as you're using this approach and you know where the elements are in the periodic table uh, compared to where the carbon is, you will always be able to do it super easy and quickly. And as always, thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button, watch this video next, and I will see you next time.